G'day knuckleheads, Uncle Knackers here. Nice old pile of pallet wood scrap there. And I'm thinking, should I burn it or make something? Is that a trick question? Of course I'll make something. And I'm thinking maybe one of those narrow hallway stands or hallway tables. I've never made one of those before and I'll make it nice and rustic and as per all of my projects, very simple to make. Let's do it. And the first thing we need to do is tidy up some of this pallet wood. Now I'm just going to give these boards a very light touch up with the electric planer. But before you do it, make sure you denail the boards first. Now first up, I'm going to make the legs out of these four wide pallet boards. And I'm going to join them together with my trusty old biscuit joiner. And there'll be one set of legs at one end and one set up the other end. Okay, we'll just tighten these up. go too tight in case the whole thing buckles up. I think that'll do it. Now I'll just throw some of these weights on top and that should keep it flat. Beautiful. Okay it's 24 hours later. Let's see how these legs look. There's the first set. Looks pretty good. And there's the second set. I'm happy with that. Now we just need to cut them to size. Now the overall length for the legs is going to be 875 millimeters, which according to my notes is roughly 34 and a half inches. Now I've had a bit of a drama today and the drop saw has decided that it doesn't want to work. No dramas, you just need to adapt. So I'm using the old circular saw instead. With the legs now done, it's time to attach the top rail. And once again, I'm using the old biscuit joiner. Now just remember, this is pellet wood, so you may get a few gaps and cracks in the joint itself, which is fine, because it just adds to that rustic charm. Let's put this thing together. Bit of glue for the biscuits. Don't be shy with the glue. Just slide those biscuits in like that. Beautiful. Now I'm just going to put a couple of nails into the end of this to hold it in place till the glue dries. When clamping the hall stand together, I had to do some improvising because the clamps that I had weren't long enough to span the entire distance. Pathetic, I know. So what I did to get over that was to install a block halfway along, which effectively halved the distance which then enabled me to be able to use the clamps that I had. It worked like a charm. It's now time to put the bottom shelf in, but I find myself in a bit of a dilemma. You see, I really like this top piece. I think it looks really cool, and I want this bottom piece to look just as cool as that. But the drama is, is that I have three, three pieces to choose from, and they're all as good as one another. It's really tricky, I can't decide which one to use. There must be a way of selecting which piece. Got it. Eeny, meeny, miny, Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. 
that's it. Very technical. It's now time to screw down this support piece for the bottom shelf. And I'm keeping it down from the top of the rail the distance of the width of the shelving board. That way when the shelf goes in, it'll be flush at the top of that rail. Beautiful. It's now time to put the slats on for the bottom shelf. And a big tip, give them a little sand first before you install them. It's much easier. Love it. Now I think the hall stand needs a couple of drawers. So before I put the top on, I'm going to cut a couple of drawer faces into this top rail. It's now time to assemble the drawers. But before that, I just need to finish off last night's leftovers. I made some fried rice. It's good stuff. Mm. For the base of the drawers, I'm just going to use some of this old cement sheet that I had. <coughs> that I had. I had that. I had this lying around the shed. Now I also added some pine beading to the face of the drawer just to give it some depth. But when I painted it and sanded it back to give it that rustic look, the raw pine finish came through. So to disguise that, I made a brew out of steel wool and vinegar, mixed that up and then painted that all over this beading which stained that raw pine. And I think it came up pretty good. And the drawer just simply slides on these two timber rails. And I've also got a stopper at the back there so that when the drawer is fully closed, it finishes up flush with the face of this top rail. Beautiful. All right, it's time to put the top on. So there it is, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Now all I need to do is give it a bit of a sand. So I'll kick off with an 80 grit paper, followed by a 120. And then to get that beautiful, super smooth finish, I'll give it a hit with a 180, maybe even the 240. And then the final thing, a couple of coats of varnish. With the table now sanded, it feels absolutely beautiful. And to finish it off, I'm just going to apply a couple of coats of this clear satin varnish. It's good stuff. Alrighty, it's time for the big reveal. We've gone from this to this, an absolutely fantastic looking hall table. I absolutely love it. Great tip, knackers. Well, I hope you enjoyed and found that video useful. And if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget to give the video the old thumbs up. That's always greatly appreciated. And as per usual, in a few seconds time, there'll be a few photos going backwards and forwards 
of the finished product. Alrighty, I think I've earned a cup of tea. So until next time, I'm out of here. Cheers. Thank you.